Hello, I'm Greg Pollock, and you're watching the 11th episode of the Scaling Rails screencast series supported by New Relic. You guys are about to see an interview that I did with Taylor Wibley at RubyConf. Taylor Wibley works for Engine Yard, and it turns out if you're an Engine Yard customer, you actually get access to New Relic's bronze level RPM service for absolutely free. It's good to know. Here's the interview. I'm here with Taylor Wibley, who is the director of support for Engine Yard. So he also feels a lot of pain when it comes to bad scaling Rails applications. And he's here to give us three tips for scaling your Rails. All right, the first tip is you shouldn't uh, depend on RSS feeds or other external resources inside a request without being able to handle you know, the absence of, of that um, feeds data or to at least handle the exception that it might generate. Okay. Number two, let's talk about active record. Um, there's a lot of uh, n plus one problems, which is where you know you might do, you might have a, a collection or a find all, and then you iterate over um, some subset of that, and each one causes a select rather than having a join where you get all the information at once. There's a lot of uh, SQL that that Rails generates that. Uh, is good, but it's not good if it doesn't have an index as well. So you want to use tools like New Relic to figure out where you don't have indexes and things like that. And the third thing, I guess, is you know consider your design up front. Um, we've scaled GitHub, I think, pretty successfully. Um, those guys did a lot of work up front to decide how they were going to be able to shard their application. And so they, as they've grown like wildfire, we've kind of you know moved with them to implement that design. So they considered where, how, where and how they could shard, and as they've needed to now, we've been able to work into that. A lot of customers you know, assume success, but they assume it on a limited scale, and so when they design their application, they don't think about where the stress points are gonna be and how they'll be able to deal with those stress points. So I think every developer, um, every person on the team should talk about you know, where the hotspots are in the application. Again, you can use something like New Relic or um, you know, any of the other birth programs and look for those up front and then deal with them early and often. So I think that's it. So the one thing that Taylor mentioned in that video is to optimize your database or, you know, architect your database in a way that it can scale. So I thought we'd take a look at a couple tips on how to keep your database fast. First of all, one of the things that Taylor mentioned was don't forget indexes. Whenever you have a foreign key like user ID here, you need to make sure you have an index for it. Second of all, don't forget to use include. In this case, if we did post find all include user, it would not only return to us the last 10 posts, but also all of the users which wrote those posts, probably the authors of those posts. Next up, use counter caching. I'm not gonna go into exactly how to do this, but it's something you might wanna look into. Also, the Query Trace plugin is useful for figuring out where the SQL is being generated from in your app. So if you look in your logs and you see all of these ugly SQL lines, you're like, well, I want to know which piece of Ruby code is generating this. Once you install the plugin, it'll actually give you in your log the exact line of code where that query is being generated. Don't be afraid to drop to SQL if you need to really optimize a query. You can do this in two different ways. First of all, just by doing a connection.execute and secondly by doing a find by SQL command. Also, there is no shame in denormalizing database columns, right? We have this very logical mind as programmers that we should isolate things into many different tables as they logically should be laid out. But if you need to for optimization, there's nothing wrong with flattening that data where you need to to get the speed that you need. If there's no way to get around doing a lot of queries in your application, there's no way you can cache that, then you might consider splitting off into a slave and a master database. And in Rails, there's a plugin that we can use called Masochism. Masochism allows you to specify a slave database in your database.yaml and a master database. And by default, it's going to send all of the writes to your master database and all of the reads to your slave database, which will help alleviate database load. Of course, there is some configuration here that you're going to have to do on your own, and that's basically the replication between the master and the slave, and of course that's going to depend on which database you're using. Next up, Taylor mentioned database sharding. So well, what does that look like particularly? So this is one way we could shard our databases. We could have a California database, a Florida database, and an Oregon database. And if there's a client from Oregon that comes in, our Rails app is going to go, okay, he's from Oregon, so all of his queries go to the Oregon database. For doing database sharding in Rails, we can use the data fabric gem. 
If we continue our previous example, we might have a report model that looks like this. So as you can see, we've got data fabric shard by state. Then in our application.rb, when any page is loaded, we basically need to be able to select which database we're going to use by saying activate shard city, and I guess we could get the current city by looking at the state of this current user, and it would select that particular database. Uh-oh, it's time for a little shameless self-promotion. I apologize. If you want to learn more about Active Record, I have a screencast for nine bucks over at nvcast.com called Advanced Active Record. We go through some of the stuff that we went over, like the counter caching, even polymorphic associations, loading large data sets, and at the end doing single table inheritance. Some advanced Active Record stuff, some of it that's involved with scaling Active Record. So check it out if you want to learn more about it. That's all I've got for this episode. Coming up next, we're going to be talking with Jesse Newland, who works for Rails Machine, and then talking a little bit about deployment strategy. Thanks for watching.